here today with us. Thank you, Wade, for your introduction and moderating, and John Lu and our fellow panelists for being here today as well. Um, I am Maria Foscarinas. I'm executive director and founder of the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty, the legal arm of the national movement to end and prevent homelessness in America. We're grateful to Senator Durbin and his staff for hosting this event and for their leadership on human rights. Oh, do I need a riser? Can you all see me? You can see me, right? I think I'll be okay. I might fall off. Um, I think I'll, I'll just stay short for the moment. Um, the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty is deeply committed to advancing human rights here in the United States. We are also founding members of the U.S. Human Rights Network and of the Human Rights at Home campaign. Indeed, we have been working on the human right to housing for the past 15 years, almost since the beginning of our existence. That's because, human, because we view homelessness in America as a human rights crisis, and I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that. Right now, in particular, record numbers of men, women, and children are without housing, driven by the foreclosure crisis and continued unemployment. They are driven to shelters if they are fortunate, or the streets if they are less so. Families and children are the fastest growing group of homeless people today. In the richest nation on earth in the 21st century, this is simply unacceptable. A human rights approach to homelessness helps us not only to define the depth of the problem, but also points us to its solution. Understanding that housing is a human right can help to generate the political will to ensure that all Americans are housed, despite the pressure for budget cuts. The UPR process was a critical step in moving this approach forward. NLCHP helped organize consultations in dozens of cities across the country. Scores of people gave heartbreaking testimony about foreclosures and evictions they are facing, about racial steering practices and predatory lending, and about the criminalization of homelessness. According to a State Department official, housing was the number one human rights issue that was raised. The report from the Human Rights Council, which followed the review of the United States last November, included a number of recommendations to the United States to better ensure the right to housing and to protect the people, the rights of people without housing. Following up on that report, we and our coalition partners organized meetings, working with the State Department and with HUD and other federal agencies to to um, produce a good U.S. response to that report. And we were pleased that in the official United States response, um, which was issued on March 18th, many of the recommendations were accepted. For the first time, the U.S. indicated that homelessness implicates human rights concerns and indicated support for further measures to reduce homelessness and to protect the rights and dignity of homeless people. It also indicated support for the rights to food and health and for further efforts to ensure adequate housing for all. These are crucial steps forward, putting us on record before the world community. But to be truly meaningful, they must be translated into action, and Congress has a critical role to play. The current budget debate is key. Reducing homelessness will not be possible if funds for housing and other social supports are cut. Indeed, what we really need is increases that are meaningful in such funding. This is essential to meeting our human rights obligations. What's more, the American public agrees. In a recent poll, more than 70% of Americans surveyed agree that housing is a basic human right and two-thirds support more spending to ensure that right. Congress should take that public support seriously and reject cuts to housing and emergency services. Instead, Congress should secure the President's request of $2.37 billion in funding for HUD's homeless programs, 
one million for HUD's homelessness prevention efforts, and one billion for the National Affordable Housing Trust Fund. The right to housing is not only about budgets. Congress can also help prevent homelessness by making the Protecting Tenants of Foreclosure Act permanent and improving the ability of tenants and regulation, regulators to enforce it. As members of the Human Rights at Home campaign, we're also calling on Congress to reform the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights to become the Civil and Human Rights Commission. Our human rights obligations fall equally on the, at the state and local level, and local congressional offices should and could work with state and local human rights commissions to implement the March 18th human rights commitments. Thank you, and we look forward to our continued working collaboration. Thank you so much, Thank you.